I'm going to be explaining to you some basics of trigonometry. And trigonometry implies tri, which means triangle. So here we're going to talk just very briefly about what is a triangle, first of all. Uh, most people know this shape, right? It's something that has three sides. Now, do the sides have to be equal? No, not necessarily. And what about the angles? Uh, that we can talk about. I think that's maybe worthwhile. So I'm going to try to uh, draw you a triangle with this little tool here. So we'll see how this works. Just uh, draw one. It doesn't have to be right angled at all. It could be anything. I'm just trying to draw you some generic triangle here. Now, there are lots of different types of conventions for naming uh, angles and sides, but I'm going to show you at least a common one. So one, for example, what if I name this, this tip here, or this vertex, I'll call this A, and I'll call this other edge here B, and I'll call this other one C. And it turns out those are often what we name these angles. So we would say, for example, this angle right here could be called angle A, and therefore this one right here would be called angle B, and this one would be called angle C. Now sometimes we use a Greek letter to mean an unknown angle. We'll use the Greek letter theta. So that right there, that would be your unknown angle, because maybe you're trying to calculate it or find it. So you have to know something about this. Um, and I think what really helps then is to see how we also name the sides. So for example, if this here is capital A, that's the, that's the angle here, then the side opposite to it. So imagine your little angle A and you're looking across here. Then the side that you see opposite to you, like this right here, not beside you, not beside you over here, but straight across, that would be little a, in other words, lowercase a. And the one that's opposite to capital B then will be called lowercase b. And the one that's opposite to C then will be called lowercase c. And this is a common convention. That doesn't mean you have to use this all the time. No, not at all. But I think this is a really useful way. And in fact, you'll, this will come up a lot in mathematics. So I may as well be aware of it. Now we know something special about the sum of the interior angles of a triangle. In other words, we know that um, this angle A plus angle B plus angle C, that's what I mean by sum. Sum means add up, and interior means that, just add up all the angles inside that triangle. And they have to equal 180, which can be really useful then. So if you know two of the angles and you want to know the third, you can just figure that out. And finally, we have something called a right angle triangle. That's when one of the angles is 90 degrees. And it doesn't matter which one. That's the important thing. It doesn't matter. In other words, uh, most people draw right angle triangles, you know, like this. You know, they draw them oriented like that and then like this, for example. And people are used to seeing it like this. And in fact, we have a little convention as well. If it's right angle, we often draw it with a little thing like this. This tells us this is 90 degrees. So maybe I'll make it like this, so now we have A here, and let's say we have B, and we have C. Now does it matter which one is named A, B, and C if you're not told? Not at all. You can name them whatever you like. Or if you're given a question where they have labels, then obviously stick with those labels. But then we know then that in this case, angle A, and sometimes we use this little symbol for angles. So angle A equals 90 degrees, for example. And then what are these other angles here, B and C? Well, I don't know, but I know that they both have to add up to another 90 degrees because 90 plus something plus something has to equal 180. So I know that at least that this plus this has got to be 90. Now I don't know enough information about it to guess, so I'm not going to go any further than that. So I think this is maybe a good place to stop as far as right angle triangles. Now one thing you can see though is that people are used to seeing them drawn this way, but you can always take the whole thing and Oops, I didn't mean to do it like that. You can actually take the whole thing then and rotate it. I think I can do that by grouping all this together. There we go. Now I can take this whole thing. I mean, it can be like this. It could be like this. It could be whichever way you want to look at it. Okay, so triangles don't have to be lined up nicely. It could be like this. It's still a right angle triangle. There's still one of them that's 90. Okay, so that's just the important thing here I wanted to show you. So how do we use this? We can use a theorem by our good old pal Pythagoras. Uh, it's called the Pythagorean Theorem, or some people call it Pythagoras Theorem. I don't think it matters too much, but let's, let's actually draw ourselves a nice triangle here. So I'll draw a nice right angle triangle, because this one will only work for right angle triangles. Okay, this is really important. In fact, I'm going to put it like this. So only, this only works or right angle triangles. In other words, it only works for a triangle where one angle is 90 degrees. Otherwise, this thing does not hold true. Okay, so you have to be very, very careful here. So in this case right here, because this that I've drawn now, I've made it a right angle triangle. 
And now we can deal with it. Now we can do something with it. So what if I name these little uh, these little angles here? Maybe I'll name this one A, and I'll name this one B, and I'll call this one here C. This is actually a convention here. Well, then the little sides, remember, this little side will be called little A. And that's opposite to the angle A. And opposite to angle B will be little side B, or side B here. And this one here will be side C. Now, it's hard to tell which one's capital and lowercase, but hopefully you can see that. So this is Pythagoras' theorem. It says this. It says that c squared equals a squared plus b squared. This is it. Whoops, I don't know what happened there. So this right here, this is Pythagoras' theorem. This is super important. We use this a lot in mathematics. Okay, so do not be afraid of this one. This one comes up quite a bit. Um, so I do want you to sort of have some familiarity with it or make sure you take a look at it, make sure you know what you're doing. Whoops. I didn't mean to do that one. Maybe I'll do, maybe I'll do um, something like this with stars by it. There we go. So this way, at least we can see it. This is super duper important. Now, what I'd like to show you, uh, what this really means is that if you know this length C, now C has to be the hypotenuse. So we actually name these. We have names for these different sides here. So let's just say here, um, we can go back to my pen and I can say this one right here. This one here is called the hypotenuse. That's the name of this side. And the hypotenuse is always the longest one in a triangle, and it's always uh, opposite to the 90 degrees. So whichever one is 90 degrees, that's the hypotenuse is the one that's opposite to that angle. So if this right here, this is the angle that's 90 degrees, then the side opposite to it is called the hypotenuse. Now we have names for these other sides here. One might be called adjacent or um, opposite, but then it depends on which angle we're looking at. So I'm gonna leave it at just this word for now. So just hypotenuse. Later on when we're working with sine and cosine and tangent, it's gonna be important to name the other ones. I'm just gonna stick with this. This is called the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse should be called C. Now you can name them whatever else you want, but then it's just gotta be the hypotenuse squared will be equal to the other side squared plus the other side squared. Does it matter which order they go in? Nope, you can reverse them. So you can say it's b squared plus a squared, that's fine. But c squared is the one that's on its own, and that's got to be the hypotenuse. So that has to be this one that's by itself. That's how this one works. So what this really means is if you know this value right here, then and you know this one, then you can figure out that one. Or you know that if this one, if you know this value and this value, then you can figure out what the hypotenuse is. So this is useful for finding a third side if you know two sides. And I want to show you a really nice graphical way to explain this c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So I have a little YouTube video I'm just going to open up here and just make sure it fits within here. I just looked up Pythagorean and water because I remember seeing this years ago. Um, so if we look at this, this is a really nice simple demonstration. So here they have a little triangle and they've made little glass squares. And can you see that this is a square that is this length. See like length, let's say we call that one a. And this right here represents a square that is length b. And this one over here represents a square that's length c. So this is really saying this squared plus this squared hopefully equals this squared. And that means if you look at this, they've actually put water in this. And so as we press play here, we're going to see what happens. So this uh, lovely student here is going to rotate this wheel. And these are actually filled with water. So you can see as she rotates it, you'll see that the water then empties out of those other triangles, the a squared plus b squared, and it goes into this one, which is c. And you see that this also makes exactly a square. So this tells you that this square is the same as the sum of these two squares. I think it's a really nice, elegant, simple, graphical way to see a Pythagorean theorem in action. So you can see that here. Isn't that great? So hopefully this at least proves to you this is not made up. This is something that really works. Uh, now, of course, we have this really bad joke. I'm sure you've seen this one before. This has been around for a while, but I like this one. So someone said, find X. Someone said, here it is. There it is. Obviously, no. In math, we want to actually calculate this. That's what they should say, calculate, not find. But oh, well, let's actually do an example then. So we've got this. So maybe, maybe you walk east for two kilometers, and then you walk north for three kilometers. How far are you from your starting point? Now there's maybe a more practical one, so maybe I'll start to draw this one. So I'm going to try to draw myself going east for two kilometers. Now how far is two? It can be anything as long as I label it so. And then I go north for three. Now three is a little bit bigger than two, so obviously I'm going to try to draw this a bit bigger. 
Keep in mind, this is not to scale. And in fact, I just want to give you a nice hint. If you're doing math problems or things like this and you see diagrams, don't try to guess things by their actual size. What math teachers and people doing tests like to do, it's maybe a little bit sneaky, but they don't want you to just guess at the values. In other words, they want you to calculate them. So they're going to draw them to where they don't really work. Um, I'm not saying there's any nefarious intent here. I'm just saying that that's, that is something to keep in mind. You probably want to calculate it, not just try to measure it. Unless you're told it's a scale drawing, then absolutely, then you can measure it. But here, this is 90 degrees. And you can see that we've started here. This is my start point. See, I started here, and I went east for two kilometers, so I went that way, and then I stopped, and then I went north, which is up, in this case right here, so I went up for this much. And the question is, how far am I from my starting point? Well, I started here, I finished here, so what we're really asking for is this value right here. So I want this value, which is, in this case, I can call this C, because that's the hypotenuse. Why is it that? Because this is 90 degrees, and that's opposite to it. So if I do that, then I look at this, and I say, great, now I'm, I know what to do, hopefully. I've got my nice equation. I've got Pythagoras' theorem. It says that c squared equals a squared plus b squared. And what often helps is to show that that's what you're doing. So I would say c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So c squared equals, now, which one should I call a? It actually doesn't matter. Maybe I call this one a. So I'll say 2 squared. And this one here, then will be 3 squared. If I do that, that means I get c squared equals, well, 2 squared, that's 2 times 2, which is 4. 3 squared is not 3 times 2, it's 3 times 3. So that is 9. So now 4 plus 9. That means c squared is 4 plus 9, and 9 plus 4 is going to be 13. So then c is going to be, how do I get c on its own? I don't know if you remember how to undo a square. You square root both sides. If I take the square root of this side, square root and a square undo each other, and then I get square root of 13. Now, mathematically, it should be a plus and a minus. This is what always happens, because you can always have negative number squared or a positive number squared would give you this. But we're going to keep the positive one, because that's the only one that makes sense. It doesn't make much physical sense to have a negative length. So I'm going to say it's this. Now, maybe I want to figure out what that actually means, so I can get out my trusty calculator and actually calculate the square root of 13. And I can actually figure that out. Oh, that's 3.6, approximately. So if I use the right amount of significant figures, then I can say, wow, that's actually just fine. So we can say C then is approximately 3.6 kilometers. Because that's more useful than saying I'm a square root of 13 kilometers. This is the full mathematical solution. See, this is exactly this, whereas this is rounding. I'm rounding it off. So I put a little dot, or maybe you can make a squiggly equal sign. But this is how we deal with this. And maybe we can do another one. Maybe we can do this one right here. So we have, uh, maybe this time we have a pole sticking straight up here. This is maybe like a flagpole or something. And this is going to be 90 degrees. And maybe you have like a string going from the top of the pole all the way down to the ground. And you know how long that string is. And maybe you know how long that shadow is or something like that. So you can measure this length and you can measure this length. And we want to know this value right here. Now, which one is the hypotenuse? Give some thought to that, because all you got to know is which one is the hypotenuse. So if this is 90 degrees, that one is the hypotenuse. That means then this one, I can call this A, maybe I'll call this one B. It doesn't matter. I could have called this A, though, as long as it's not C. This just can't be called C. So if I do that, then I again use my trusty friend Pythagoras. So I say C squared equals A squared plus B squared. It's always a good idea to show what equation you're starting with. And therefore, I can start filling in the value. So this is 12 squared equals 5 squared plus b squared, which I don't know. I don't know b, but I know this one. This one I can call it a, so that could be 5. So 12 squared, that's 12 times 12, that's 144. And I have 5 squared, that's 5 times 5, which is 25. And I don't know what b squared is. Now I want to solve for b, so what do I do? I maybe take the 144, and I might want to, I don't know, subtract 25 from it. So if I do that, 144 minus 25, that's going to be b squared. And what's 144 minus 25? Let's see, that would be 119. Is that right? Yeah. So that'll be b squared. So if I want b by itself, now keep in mind, I can just reverse this. So I can say b on this side. b is going to be the square root of 119, like we did before. Because I want to get rid of the squared, and to do that, you take the square root of both sides. So square root of this undoes that one, and that means you have square root of 19, uh, 119. 
Now, uh, that's in meters, that's the exact answer, but that's not very helpful necessarily. So I want to find out then what is the square root of 119. And I get an answer of 10.9. So then I can say, well, maybe I say it's pretty much 11. So it's a pretty much 11 meters. Then it depends on how many uh, decimal points you want to use, but this is around 11 meters. And I hope this actually makes sense here. That's the height of the pole. So you can say, uh, maybe it helps then to say the height of the pole. You know, sometimes you want to actually just label this so it's really, really clear. So the height of the pole is going to be 11 meters. So it's 11 meters tall, that pole. And there you go. That's some ideas of how we can use Pythagoras' theorem.